Good evening, everyone here on YouTube. We're going to get the uh, the net started in about five minutes, uh, but uh, I'm going to be playing a, uh, a a piece of a podcast here. So uh, let's uh, we'll jump into the uh, beginning of the net in a few minutes. But uh, let me uh, get things started here. This is K1DBC. All stations, please stand by. The Denver Radio Club Learning Net starts in five minutes. Again, good evening to everyone. Um, if you watched these before, um, uh, you might have seen this, but uh, this is uh, Where's My Jetpack uh, podcast by Sarah Crudis and uh, Luke Moore. Uh, really cool stuff here. So um, I will uh, throw it over to them. We have been given the scientific knowledge, the technical ability, and the materials to pursue the exploration of the universe. To ignore these great resources would be a corruption of a God-given ability. Welcome back to the world of Where's My Jetpack. Back in the 1960s, we were promised everything from jetpacks to flying cars and holidays in space. But here we are in the 21st century and not a jetpack in sight. So what happened to those space age dreams? I'm Sarah Crudis. And I'm Luke Moore. And each episode, we'll be taking you on a mission to find out by exploring a different futuristic promise that never was to find out if it was all science fiction or if these great inventions are either just around the corner or lurking in unexpected places. This is episode five, Where's My Space Hotel? Good morning, sir. Good morning. We haven't seen you up here for a long time. No. Did you have a pleasant flight, sir? That's very nice, thanks. So in this week's episode, we're talking about space hotels and certainly when you you go back in time, you look at the 60s and you see science fiction, 2001 A Space Odyssey, they're, they're checking into a space hotel and when it looked like in the 1960s, space was going to be something quite common by the you mm. know the 2020s, space hotels were something that people started to imagine. People started to dream about them and imagine that you know future generations, perhaps even themselves, going to a space hotel. Yeah, and I can understand why. It seems like a uh, a fairly natural progression. Where you, you know any any kind of new exotic destination, you get tourism. I'd love to stay up in a space hotel. Would you? As long as I could get a um, alien room service. And a flying saucer higher. A flying saucer higher. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wayne, first of all, describe your alien room service. <laughs> oh, exactly. How would that work? <laughs> no, but I just, I just mean when you get up there, it's got, it's going to have to be exotic. It's going to have to be glamorous. It's going to have to be interesting. And ordinarily speaking, when you go on a holiday, you go and stay in a hotel. You go into the hotel or the holiday destination for a reason. With space hotels, whether they're going to be on the moon or on a kind of orbiting spacecraft or whatever, there's not much else to do. So the hotel itself is going to have to be good. Do you think the, the view would the be view, good? I was going to say the view. Most people go into space for the view, and then also the experience of microgravity and just that you know, to say you're in space, to say you can look back at the Earth and see our fragile blue Earth, but also to look out at the blackness of space mm. and and to see stars in a way you you can't see them on Earth, and just that just that experience yeah. of, of being in space and and checking into a space hotel. Does that not excite yeah, that, you? That would be cool, and I think that yeah, that's clearly what most people are going to want to want to do. They're going to go out there and want to going to want to experience it. They're going to want to say they've been to space, all that good stuff. But I mean, they, they, I mean, we're going to find out more on, through the course of today's episode, of course. But they're going to be fairly short trips if there's going to be nothing else to do, right? I mean, I think it depends what exactly we're talking about. But, but to me, a space hotel is somewhere where you stay for an amount of time. Otherwise, it's not really a hotel, is it? It's just a trip. Yeah, that is true. And we need to also remember, it, it's not just about work. In fact, those dreams of living in space of a luxury hotel have been around since before space travel even became a reality. In the middle of the 20th century, for the first time in history, man reached beyond his planet and began to probe the mysteries of space. All right, thanks for checking things out on here. Where's my Jetpack uh, podcast? Uh, their episode, Where's My Space Hotel? I'll play a, another minute of this uh, uh, as the intro for the uh, the net here. So good evening, everyone. Uh, let's get the uh, the net started here. This is K1DBC. The DRC Learning Net will start in one minute. All stations, please stand by. This is one of the tools with which man is creating a new age. But the age of space is also the latest chapter in a story as old as man himself. Before humans had even left Earth, we had started to dream of how we could live in space. In the year 1869, 100 years before humans had set foot on the moon, 
science fiction developed the concept of a brick moon in our sky. Our first space station whizzing around the planet, imagined by the American writer Edward Everett Hale. Of course, the idea was way ahead of its time, but it wasn't forgotten. Later, in the early part of the 20th century, two of the fathers of modern rocketry, Konstantin Tilskovsky and Hermann Oberth, began looking seriously at the science behind space stations. All right, so go check that out. Really awesome podcast, really awesome uh, broadcasters there. Uh, um, where's my Jetpack podcast? Uh, um, Sarah Crudis, Luke Moore. Good evening and welcome back to the Denver Radio Club uh, Learning Net um, for um, May 31st. It's a great place to learn about ham radio and STEM topics in general. And thankfully, we have plenty of combined experience and expertise. Um, this is Kilo One Delta Bravo Charlie K1 DBC. And my name is uh, Darone. That's phonetically Delta Oscar Romeo Oscar November. Um, good evening and welcome. We appreciate everyone being here. Uh, I am the net control this evening. Um, last week, uh, net control was uh, uh, Jim and Zero TRP. Really do appreciate him uh, checking, uh, uh, taking a uh, net control um, when I'm unavailable. And if anybody is ever interested in taking net control, we're always uh, more than happy to help uh, with that. So it looked like it was a bit of a, a shorter net last week, but uh, we had still a, a few check-ins there and uh, some some traffic there. But uh, with that. Um, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, we'll, tonight we'll be taking your comments, questions, check-ins, updates, and more. We meet every Wednesday except the third Wednesday of the month at 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, 145.490 and 448.625. Um, they both require a PL tone at the moment to transmit, so 100 hertz PL tone is required to transmit, and both have negative offsets. Uh, you can contact us uh, via email if you'd like, uh, elmer at w0tx.org, most social media at Denver Radio Club. We also stream and archive our nets on youtube.com. Again, also forward slash Denver Radio Club. So if you'd like to see behind the scenes of the net or visual context, that is an additional way to view the net. We are also, uh, if you've used something like NetLogger or ClubLogger, I forget what it's called exactly, uh, w0tx.org forward slash check in, uh, w0tx.org forward slash check in. If you'd like to follow along with a check in process as a net control operator, I'll put your call sign in and it'll automatically fill in a bunch of information for me. So again, if you want to check that out, uh, you're, you're more than happy to. Uh, this net can be broken at any time for emergency or priority traffic by, by using the word break. Is there any emergency or priority traffic at this time? All right, one additional thing to keep in mind is there is a three minute timeout on the repeater at the moment. So um, uh, we're more than happy to, uh, to, to have a discussion here. Um, uh, 60 or so minutes, uh, it can uh, go over that, but uh, uh, Phil, uh, please uh, try to keep uh, uh, the, um, the traffic to about three minutes uh, at a time and uh, you can drop and pick it back up. So with that, all check-ins to the net will be taken in alphabetical groups based on the first letter of the suffix of the operator's call sign. The suffix is the first letter after the number in the call sign. If you can, please try to use ITU phonetics for the call sign and indicate if you have traffic or questions as you check in. If your suffix begins with the letters A through M, alpha through Mike, please check in now. Kilo Zero, Bravo Alpha Tango, Art Narora, no traffic. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, that time we had KB6CC, Scott, and K0BAT. Art, thank you both uh, so much for checking in. Uh, again, uh, if you'd like to uh, check in, we're taking call suffixes A through M, alpha through Mike. Please check in now. Uh, this is the Denver Radio Club Learning Net. It's a great place to learn about ham radio STEM topics. So A through M, alpha through Mike. Uh, please check in now. W0TX, repeater.
All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Might be a, a quiet net this evening as well, but uh, it is summertime. It's a nice time to uh, get outdoors and uh, spend some holiday time uh, outside. So uh, uh, we, um, that is not a problem. So um, we'll open it up. Um, let's see. We'll hold, open up the whole alphabet. Um, this is K1DBC Net Control. Um, A through Z, if your suffix begins with the letters A through Z, alpha through Zulu, please check in now. Zero, Sierra Uniform Mike. Good evening, drone. Um, those guys, everyone said they didn't have traffic. Well, I'll think of something to say hi to you about. Jonathan Lakewood. All right, in that time, we had KE0SUM. Jonathan, thank you so much for checking in. I'm sure uh, you could bring something up as well. So that's, I appreciate that. So again, um, uh, we appreciate any and all uh, check-ins we can get. Uh, if you'd like to check in, this is the Denver Radio Club uh, Ham Learning Net, great place to learn about ham radio STEM topics. Uh, we're here to discuss your, um, your projects, uh, any questions that you might have. Um, if you have uh, things, uh, let us know. Um, but with that, uh, we'll continue to take check-ins here, A through Z. If your call suffix begins with the letters alpha through Zulu, A through Z, please check in now. Let us know your call sign, your name, and let us know if you have any traffic or questions. Please call now. November Zero, Tango, Romeo, Papa, Jim in Lakewood. Good evening. Zero, you, 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 Bill Gimber. Alpha Echo Zero, Sierra Foxtrot, Steve, the All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Hold up there for just a moment. All right, that time we had N0TRP, Jim. Thank you so much for checking in and uh, taking net control uh, previously uh, last week. Uh, we had W0UUU, Bill, and AE0SF, Steve. So thank you all so much for checking in. Appreciate everyone doing that. All right, this is uh, K1DBC Net Control. Um, all right, once more, we're taking all call suffixes, all call signs. This is the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. If you'd like to call in uh, just for the count or if you have any traffic or questions, all call suffixes, all call signs. Let us know your call sign, your name, and if you have any traffic or questions, please call now. Kilo Zero, Romeo Alpha Papa, Robert and Aurora. Alpha Fox uh, Zero Echo, Alex Bromfield. All right, this is uh, K1DBC, Net Control. That time, uh, uh, Net Control, I'd like to welcome knowledge of the following check-ins. Uh, K0RAP, uh, Robert, uh, uh, thanks for uh, checking in online as well. Sorry about that. Uh, and then uh, AF0E, Alex, uh, appreciate uh, appreciate that as well. So this is Daron, K1DBC, Net Control. Again, youtube.com forward slash Denver Radio Club if you'd like to check in behind the scenes for uh, Net Control operations or uh, just behind the scenes in general. Uh, some visual context, uh, w0tx.org forward slash check in. You can see some of the, uh, the check-ins, uh, their names, and uh, get links to their QRZ pages and get some more information. But uh, um, once more, um, we'll take check-ins uh, throughout the net. But right now at the moment, uh, anyone else, any other check-ins? Uh, we're taking all call signs, all call suffixes. Please call now. Kilo Foxtrot Zero Alpha Whiskey Charlie 
Ryan, Centennial, no traffic. All right, this is K1DBC uh, Net Control. That time we had KF0 AWC Brian. Thank you so much for checking in. Um, so appreciate everyone checking in so far. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, uh, nine people checking in uh, so far. Really appreciate that. Um, let's see if you were uh, watching on YouTube. Um, I, I was playing a little bit video video here, but you can check out a pretty cool podcast called uh, Where's My Jetpack? And uh, really, really cool uh, broadcasters, uh, Sarah Crudis and Luke Moore, uh, they kind of go into uh, each episode, where is the, uh, the technology that maybe we were promised uh, 50, 60 years ago. So uh, really cool stuff on that. So I'll, I'll play uh, some of that uh, after the, uh, the net here as well uh, to take things out. But uh, with that, um, we, there's plenty of things to talk about, I'm sure, um, that we've uh, talked about in the past. Um, let's see. Uh, again, we have our upcoming uh, siren test uh, June 7th uh, for Lakewood. I think uh, everyone's a, a volunteer and booked in for that. Uh, we have Hamfest coming up. Uh, let's see, last week, uh, Azure SF Steve uh, was uh, continuing to update on his progress of uh, CW uh, learning. Uh, so really cool to hear that. Uh, what else here? Um, online K0 LAI Larry had posted a couple things to our, um, our groups.io page. Um, uh, not defunct, but uh, it's uh, uh, not as used as so much anymore, but uh, appreciate him doing that. Let me see if I can bring that up here real quick. All right, this is uh, K1DBC Net Control. Uh, me uh, news uh, messages here from uh, K0LAI Larry on, uh, on our groups.io forward slash uh, G forward slash ham learning net. Um, Let's see, he uh, brought up a SMS a GTE. It's an APRS uh, kind of interface for uh, sending um, SMS messages. Uh, unfortunately, they've had to uh, uh, shut down temporarily um, uh, due to uh, spam messages. So um, uh, yeah, we'll have to see how that works out. But I know the whole VoIP world, uh, voice over IP, and there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of stuff that goes into uh, 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 um, this kind of stuff here. So hopefully uh, that'll come back up here. Uh, he also brought up a pretty cool uh, article here from uh, KDVR, uh, local uh, Fox 31. Uh, not as long as it should be as, as, I was, as we were hoping, but uh, uh, a couple of minute clip here on uh, amateur radios, uh, uh, Aries groups, uh, uh, Arapaho Aries uh, in, in the, in the uh, area here, uh, helping out with uh, recent storms and, and storm spotting and severe weather uh, spotting. So uh, you can check that out as well. So appreciate uh, Larry uh, uh, posting that as well. So this is K1DBC Net Control. There's plenty of others uh, stuff that I can bring up, but uh, anything else, uh, if anyone else has anything else at the moment, uh, please call now. Operators, 20 of whom were active for about two and a half hours assisting and their emergencies were rarely stopped at those Adams and Arapahoe County lines. KF0BIA. Dan Fitch and his are always ready for the next big storm. All right, this is uh, K1DBC Net Control. Yeah, just playing uh, another uh, little bit of there. Uh, KF0BIA, uh, Dan Fitch, uh, for the Colorado uh, Adams and Arapaho Aries uh, group. Uh, it looks like uh, they've consolidated. So uh, pretty cool stuff there. It's uh, nice to see us in the news. And um, yeah, uh, storm spotting, uh, weather spotting. I know Steve AE0SF has also mentioned uh, uh, recent uh, weather spotting uh, he had done. I, I think if you look on YouTube, let me uh, try to bring this up here. Uh, the National Weather Service uh, Boulder had uh, uh, put on a class online, which was uh, really awesome to see. Let me see if I can bring that up here. But anyone else at the moment on anything that I've spoken about so far or anything else, uh, please call now. W0TX, repeater. Alpha Echo Zero, Sierra Fox Drop. AE0SF, Steve, go right ahead. I guess I'll get my usual progress report. I've, I've still been working on the CW, putting in, I don't know, most days I put in an hour, at least a half an hour, but I haven't been making a lot of progress, so I decided to work on the speed. And another thing is that um, I may be starting a teaching job in the not too distant future, so I may have to put this on the back burner for a while if that happens. Back to the net.
All right, AZ or SF, Steve, thanks so much for uh, uh, bringing that up here and, uh, and, and giving us some uh, progress there. So uh, 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 great things on all fronts, you know. Uh, that's awesome to hear uh, about uh, a teaching position. Yeah, you know what, our, our, uh, our income is more important than our, than our hobbies, so that's, that's awesome to hear. So, But, uh, you know, at CW Ops, uh, CW Academy, yeah, we've uh, talked about quite a lot, and uh, uh, they uh, are um, – very useful and, and very helpful. So yeah, thanks for that. And uh, if anybody's ever interested, yeah, there's a lot of uh, uh, um, um, uh, tools online to use. Uh, CWOps, CWOps.org, uh, CW Academy. There, he was just mentioning, and then there's a LCWO.net. I think. Um, learn uh, Morse code online, um, different Farnsworth, met different methods of learning. So, you know, if, if you have the inclination to essentially learn another language, it's uh, uh, pretty cool stuff here. So this is a K1DBC uh, net control. Yeah, glad to hear that, uh, AZ or SF Steve. All right, this is a K1DBC net control. Uh, uh, back on the uh, the National Weather Service uh, webs or um, NWS Boulder um, uh, YouTube page, uh, they put up their uh, National Weather Service uh, Boulder Denver uh, 2023 class that they had recently put on. So you can go and check that out. So uh, everything um, you need to know about uh, severe weather and weather uh, spotting and reporting things like that. So really cool stuff there. Um, yeah, great to hear everything there. Um, I've been speaking for quite enough here, uh, but I'm sure that I can bring up a, a few more things if needed. But anyone else at the moment, any other comments, questions, check-ins? Uh, this is the Denver Radio Club uh, uh, Learning Net, a great place to learn about ham radio, STEM topics, uh, 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 several, a lot of tendrils to this hobby. So if anybody has anything, uh, please call now. Okay, 0 comment. Uh, Steve, this is SUM, Jonathan, go right ahead. Hey, Tron, can you put back on uh, YouTube uh, all the people who checked in? Yes, uh, w0tx.org forward slash check in. You can have access to the same spreadsheet. It is just an online spreadsheet, uh, w0tx.org forward slash check in. But I do have that up on, on screen as well. So if you'd like to follow along, uh, everyone is uh, more than welcome to do so. That would be helpful. This is uh, K1DBC Net Control. Hopefully, uh, you're seeing what you're looking for there. Thank you, Drone. I was gonna not. I was gonna be nice and say, "Oh, look at your other right," but uh, I was looking at the the different check-ins, etc. And uh, a lot of extras, advanced. Uh, heck, I'm the only general. I was curious, how do we attract more technicians into this particular net? Because Drone's perfect for answering questions and. I guess the rest of us are too. I mean, you extras probably got a lot on me, but I don't know. How do you attract them? I work for HRO and I advertise drone every time I work. It's like, oh, check it on the Wednesday night net. You can learn everything. I was wondering if anybody else had any comments. Okay, E0 SUM, back to net. KE0SUM, Jonathan, that is a great question. Yeah, I'll throw it out to the net. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of experience here and a, a lot of... Uh, uh, um a lot of experience yet yeah, it's uh how do we attract more more youth into this to this net and i guess to this to this club or hobby or whatever it may be but yeah i'll throw it out to the to the to the rest of the group here uh any comments on that uh, please call now All right, this is a K1DBC net control. That is probably a question for the ages. Uh, once more, um, it's it's something uh, a lot of us have talked about for for a while, um, and it's we're probably not the first ones to to ask that same question. So, 
Um, yeah, how do, how do we attract more youth to this to this group, to this hobby, um, to this net? Um, how do we how do we show that we're not old fuddy duddies? We're not. It's not your old grandpa's hobby, and uh, there's there's uh, a lot more to it. So I, I I don't know. Yeah, it's a. I don't necessarily have the answer, but I my my, my take on things is I'm I'm an evangelist for for STEM for for technology for for all of this, and and this just happens to uh, encompass ham radio as well. So. You know, just being a, a citizen scientist and, and just trying to to learn around you. I mean, there's a lot of lot of um, lot of students, and there's a lot of lot of people around here that could probably uh, we could probably ingratiate ourselves with uh, some of the more uh, local universities and things like that. So yeah, I don't know, but I'll, I'll throw it out to the group. Anyone else on that? Go right ahead. Yeah, KF zero AWC Brian, go right ahead. Has in contact with a friend who lives up in Crystal Lakes today. She attended a EMS meeting put on by Larimer County, and they're, you know, looking for people to do ham operators up in the area because for emergency situation, and they really have a hard time finding people. Um, so she's interested in doing it. So part two of my question, or my question actually is, is are, what are the good resources for ham study? Um, I got the book and studied that way, but she's going to do it online. So I was wondering what resources are available for studying for your ham, original ham license. All right, uh, AWC Brian. Uh, yeah, great to hear that. Yeah, and part one of that. Yeah, um, uh, um, MCOM is definitely a, a huge attraction to uh, to a lot of people uh, in this hobby. Um, so that's, I, I think we might see an overlaps of, of, of a lot of uh, people with that, which is awesome to see. Um, what you mentioned at dot org hamstudy dot org is actually where I I took uh, my, my exams at least and. Uh, um, it's probably just they, they, they've understood uh, the way to kind of teach uh, a, a study mode, reading the questions, practice tests, uh, and then they, they show you the only they show you the questions that you keep failing, things like that. So hamstudy.org is a really great resource and tool to uh, study for your exam as well as uh, finding a session. So I, I would suggest that at, at least uh, hamstudy.org. Comment, S-U-M. Uh, yeah, comment, uh, S-U-M. Go right ahead. There are a lot of really good online uh, ham radio exam. Hamradioexam.org, I think, uh, has one. But my favorite is QRZ, QRZ.com. Um, and they all work kind of the same. They all have the same questions. And usually they all take keep track of your progress. But I just find using QRZ to for both the tech and the general, I studied about two weeks and it worked for me. Get you zero issue back to that. The thing is, drone, we're preaching to the choir. I'm talking to the people farther along than my my general license, so I don't know. I guess we have a lot of listeners. That's my thinking. Yes, sir, ABC. I just bought the each manual, the general, the tech general and amateur extra manuals and studied from those. So this online, a little bit new to me, so that's why I was asking that particular question. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, real quick, uh, late check-in online. Uh, Alex at KSCRE, appreciate that. Um, 
let's see. Yeah, uh, it's kind of rela not related. It's somewhat similar to like the Farnsworth methods or, or just learning CW, things like that. There's there's really good methods of, of, of how to teach yourself and 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 learn. Um, you know, read something, um, uh, hear it, you know, convert it into audio, you know, put it into your brain. There's a lot, lot of ways to learn things. So, yeah, um, uh, hamstudy.org I, I, has worked well for me. I didn't realize uh, QRZ also had a, uh, um, uh, um, a ham test kind of thing as well. So uh, really cool to see that. Uh, and then we also had uh, K0LAI checking in as well. Appreciate that. So yeah, uh, I wonder if anybody else has any uh, follow-ups on, on ways that they've learned. Uh, try to uh, study for the ham exams or um, anything like that. Uh, please call now. AE0SF, Steve, go right ahead. Yeah, I'm not, well, just a comment. I'm not sure where I fit in that. I've only had my license for about a year, even though I have an amateur extra now. I just went through the license fast, but I don't have that much experience yet, so I definitely need this group. But anyway, as far as the study materials, I use the manuals also, the, the ones from ARRL, but also there, there are some exams. I don't remember exactly where they were, but I accessed them through the ARRL. ARR well website and um, and also another resource I used quite a bit was Dave Kassler's videos from KE0OG and I think he has the technician ones on, on his YouTube channel but if, if you want to do the general or extra ones I believe the only way to get to those is if you're a member of ARRL you can go to their, their learning web page KE0SF back to the net great resources there as well. This is a K1 DBC Net Call. Appreciate that. A0SF Steve. Yeah, and, and to mention uh, as well that the question and answer pool is all public. It's all publicly available. Um, so we, you have the ability, uh, people have the ability to go see the answers to the questions. Uh, the passing score is 70% or so. Uh, uh, I think it's 25 questions for the tech in general. And then uh, double that, I think, for the um, for the extra as well as the question pool is double that. But uh, you know, if, if anybody is ever uh, taking a test and, and you feel comfortable on one, you know, just take take the other. You know, in some groups it's free. Uh, uh, retest or taking the other one is free for all groups, uh, but some groups uh, don't charge in general. But uh, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, great uh, options there as well. Thank you, uh, A0SF uh, Steve, um, for that. Anyone else on that? Uh, please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, in an online term, uh, you would have you may have heard the term lurking, L-U-R-K-I-N-G. It's just being in the background, not checking in, not talking, and that's okay. It's that's uh, we can't really see that in an analog radio, but. Uh, you know, we're happy to have uh, people just listening in, and whenever you feel comfortable jumping in, and or if you ever uh, get ex uh, your license, uh, feel free to jump in. We do take third-party check-ins, so if you're sitting around someone that does have a license, you're more than welcome to check in. So, um, if if anybody's listening that's ever wanted to, to uh, check in, please don't hesitate to do so uh, at any given time uh, at a at a lull in the conversation. So. Yeah, hopefully we can get more people. Um, uh, it, um, I mean, we, we see newer call signs here and there, and it, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hobby of few, but uh, uh, those that are in it are quite in, uh, interested in it. So it, it takes a little bit of time, but uh, you know, so we'll, we'll, people get out of their shells at some point uh, to talk about maybe what's uh, interesting to them. So uh, uh, to, to what uh, Jonathan was kind of talking about, uh, people being in the background there. So this is K1DBC Net Control. Um, I will stop talking for a moment. I'm going to uh, take just a break here. This is K1 DBC Net Control. I'll take this opportunity to take further check-ins, uh, just as we were talking about. Uh, this would be an official opportunity. If you just tuned in, my name is Darone, Delta Oscar, Romeo Oscar November. Call sign is Kilo One, Delta Bravo Charlie. I'm Net Control for the Learning Net. It's a great place to learn about ham radio and STEM topics in general. And as you've heard, uh, we have plenty of combined experience and expertise. Everyone is welcome to join in. If you'd like to check in, uh, if you can, please try to use ITU phonetics for your call sign and indicate if you have traffic or questions as you do. 
if you're uh, if you'd like to check in, uh, please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Once more, if you'd like to check in to the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net, just for the count, or if you have any traffic or questions, let us know your uh, name, call sign, and uh, if you have any traffic, uh, please call now. Thank you, Robert, will do. Yeah. Ken in Lakewood, no traffic, just listening. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, I think we had a double in there. I think I heard a K0YES Ken, and there was somebody else. Uh, if you just try to call in, uh, go uh, try it once more. This is Kilo Echo Zero Alpha Bravo, Ken in Lakewood, just listening. All right, sorry about that. Uh, I got your call sign corrected there, uh, Ken. Kilo Echo Zero Alpha Bravo uh, got you checked in. Uh, there was, uh, I think, another person trying to check in there, and I, I didn't catch it that time either. Uh, we'll, we'll just take anyone who would like to uh, check in to the, uh, the Denver Radio Club uh, Ham Learning Net. Uh, we're taking all call signs, all call suffixes. Please call now with your uh, call sign, name, and if, let us know if you have any traffic or questions. W-Zero-T-X, repeater. All right, this is a K1 DBC Net Control for the Denver Radio Club Ham Learning Net. We have another 30 minutes or so. If anybody has any comments, questions, uh, there's a few club updates I can uh, uh, bring up here um, and uh, some other news. But uh, if anybody else has any other comments, questions, any other check-ins, uh, please call now. Okay, you zero wish from drone, you want to shift gears? I have an antenna question. Sounds good there, Jonathan. KE0SUM, the net is yours. got a lot of experienced people here. I was thinking about this. Uh, uh, I have a 55-foot uh, ridge line on the top of the house. I've got a 66-foot, uh, et cetera, and bed half wave. Do you, how do you string it? Do you let some, which, uh, do, you, do you keep the transformer and everything close to the ground and do more of an inverted L? Or... I would just string that along a 55-foot uh, ridge line about uh, um, 20 feet in the air. All right, Jonathan, uh, K1DBC Net Control. Great question there uh, uh, to, I guess, reiterate there. Um, he has a 55-foot uh, ridge line on his uh, home, a 66-foot N-fed half wave. Uh, he's uh, wondering uh, how to string that up. Um, so he's a, a transformer on the ground as an inverted L or string along uh, 20 feet in the air. If anybody has um, any follow-up on that, uh, let us know. All right, uh, this is the wrong K1DBC net control. Um, 66 foot N fed half wave. Uh, how, how would uh, uh, um, how would anyone else maybe uh, potentially put that up? Um, would you convert it at, or uh, uh, set it up as an inverted uh, L? 
or inverted V, I think maybe is what I meant to put there, um, or um, straight along uh, in the air. Uh, please go now. Or maybe I'm misunderstanding that, and if, if Jonathan, if you want to clear that up, go right ahead. Actually, you said drone. Uh, I brought it up as a little more esoteric when you get into antennas. Um, I have the ARRL antenna book, which is, ooh, there's some heavy reading. But, yeah, I study antennas and look at them all the time. As you know, we've talked about antennas before. But I just thought I'd bring it up uh, kind of intimidating subject because then you get into radiation patterns and all kinds of things. So I can let that one go, Drone. Thanks for entertainment. Get E0SUM back to that. All right, sounds good there, Jonathan. Uh, this is a Daron K1DBC. Yeah, some heavy reading there, the antenna book. And uh, yeah, we've, we've talked about this uh, quite a bit, but we've really only scratched the surface, quite frankly. Uh, as we all know, this is uh, RF engineering, and there's a lot of, lot of engineering and a lot of math and, and science and, 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 and things involved with uh, uh, ground planes and uh, uh, affected radiated patterns and, and things like that. So yeah. Uh, Good, good question. Yeah, uh, hopefully there's uh, some some very specific setups uh, provided from the uh, from the manufacturer or whatnot, uh, 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 certain configurations. So, um, yeah, uh, good question there. Um, yeah, if anybody else has ever been playing around with the NFED half wave antennas or um, HF antennas or has ever had any questions on that, um, please don't hesitate to to ever bring those up. So, um, this is Daron K One DBC. Uh, Anyone else on that topic or anything else? Please call now. All right, this is Daron K1DBC Net Control. I wish osmosis were were a real thing for me with this stuff. As much as I've talked about this, I, I still swear I, it's not sinking in. It's not ever. Some some things sink in. I get some things, but uh, yeah, as 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 you know, this uh, some of this stuff is uh, can get uh, quite hairy and uh, uh, in the weeds. So I, I've not played around too much with HF. I, I've had an NFED half wave in the five in the past, a G5 RV. I kind of just put it up uh, as an inverted V, and uh, it kind of worked quite well for uh, FT8. So I haven't really gotten into that uh, too too long uh, too here, too much here recently, but. Uh, um, yeah, it, um, it can be complicated, but, you know, just follow what the, the manufacturer says. Uh, there are different setups and guidelines, and as long as you have the room and the space to, to do things, um, um, I, I think the world's, uh, the sky's the limit. So this is K1DBC Net Control. Anyone else uh, at the moment? Any other comments, questions, check-ins? Uh, please call now. This is K1DBC Net Control. If you don't have the space to try something out and you would like to try something out, uh, come and check out our upcoming DRC Saturday event. Um, uh, these are happening uh, once a month throughout the uh, 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 summer time here. Our next one is uh, June 4th, this uh, upcoming Saturday, uh, Prospect Arena in uh, in Arvada. So you can come and uh, hang up your own antennas and, and, and uh, check out other people's equipment uh, June 4th, this Saturday. Um, excuse me, 3rd, June 3rd, Elmer Picnic on the Park, uh, we'll be feeding you there, uh, HT programming, code plugs, so if you want to have your uh, HT programmed or uh, get some help doing that, we're, we can do that for you, and a radio tune-up, they'll have an Aeroflex radio test equipment there, so you can have your radio checked out. Um, so, pretty cool uh, opportunity, you can check out some photos uh, from uh, this the, the past event uh, uh, in April, uh, just a really cool, just casual uh, gathering, um, uh, what's the wording here, uh, in an effort to provide more opportunities to support uh, DRC membership and uh, anyone else uh, interested, uh, learn about ham radio, test equipment uh, with knowledgeable support and take some time to get together and have some fun. Uh, they've come up with a DRC Saturday event. Uh, this is Kevin Schmidt, uh, K0KPS, Alex Acera, KSERE, and Mark Thomas, N0XRX have uh, kind of uh, uh, put this together here. So everyone is invited. Uh, it's, it's, it's a free event. Um, it's... It, it, there's limited seating, so do try to bring in your own uh, chair if you can, things like that. So it, it is a, it's kind of just a parking lot. Uh, if you are visited our field day, you would have seen that. So uh, check that out on our website under events, uh, DRC Saturday. So this coming Saturday, check that out.
All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Yeah, sorry if you can't make that on 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 the Saturdays. Um, um, this is uh, just we're doing just a few of these this year, um, and, but uh, we might we'll try to continue this uh, for, uh, upcoming as well. So um, you know, we, the date and chimes uh, can change, and uh, we might rename it from DRC Saturday to something else. But uh, we uh, really do appreciate everyone that could attended it last uh, uh, last month. And again, Prospect Arena. Prospect Arena, uh, Google Maps link on our website. Don't you think you guys should just start uh, going early and tailgating? that get more people? Get you zero issue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. I should have mentioned the time. 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So oh, we had a lot of attendance there. So yeah, check things out. So yeah, if you want to come in uh, earlier, it is it's a it's a park. You can come in and park there for free uh, beforehand. So um, a lot of people will uh, start to show up around 9 a.m. or so. But yeah, if, if anybody wants to uh, <laughs> do that, that's that would be awesome as well. All right, this is Daron K1DBC Net Control. We have another uh, 20 minutes or so here. I can bring up a couple of things, um, uh, other things recently that have uh, been brought up here. But if anyone else has any other comments, questions, check-ins, anything else you'd like to uh, bring up for this evening's Learning Net, please call now. W0TX, repeater. This is Kilo Echo Zero Alpha Bravo Ken in Lakewood. Uh, has anyone out there successfully tuned an Antron 99 to 28.400. And if you do, do you have any numbers on it to, uh, that would help me out? Uh, we might rename uh, PC Net Control. We have another email on that. 28 successfully tuned an Antron 99. All right, this is Daron, K1DBC Net Control. Good question there. Uh, I am not too sure on that uh, KE0 Alpha Bravo. Good question. Antron 99, uh, has anybody successfully tuned it to a 28.400? Uh, it looks like you were asking about. So, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure on what that, what that device was, but if anybody has any uh, uh, comments or questions on that, I'll try to look up some things as well. Uh, please call now. All right, this is Daron, K1DBC Net Control. A little bit more on that antenna. It's 18-foot um, uh, SWR uh, tuning um, up to 2,000 watts. Um, it looks like it's uh, for CB use. Um, I'm trying to figure out the exact uh, bands here. It looks like it's uh, 10 to 12 meter bands. Um, and uh, I, f I can't remember exactly what the 28 uh, frequency is, but uh, yeah, I'm not too sure on that. Uh, anyone else on the, the Antron 99 uh, antenna, um, base station antenna, maybe tuning it up on uh, 28.4 uh, megahertz, call, uh, please call now. Echo Zero Alpha Bravo. Okay, thanks. I was just wondering. I've got uh, I uh, trimmed uh, 11 inches off of it, and uh, I've got it to about uh, 1.3 as as far as the SWRs, which is livable. But uh, it just doesn't seem like I can uh, I can get it down to one to one, and I really don't want to uh, cut much more off of it. So uh, I'll have to do some more reading and. Uh, and uh, thank you. Uh, thank you anyway. This is Kilo Echo Zero off of Bravo, and I'm clear. All right, sounds good there, uh, Alpha Bravo Ken. Yeah, it looks like that uh, antenna is made for the, the 10 meter band there, 28 uh, to. 28 megahertz to 29.7 megahertz. So, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting uh, uh, progress because uh, that should fall in uh, with that uh, that 28.4 that you're trying to do there, though. So, yeah, uh, nice uh, trying to uh, reuse of, of antennas there. It uh, looks like it's a pretty good uh, base station antenna. So, hopefully, uh, um, you can uh, use that within the for amateur uh, radio use as well. So, uh, very cool stuff.
All right, there's a drone K1 DBC net control. Yeah, uh, reuse uh, and recycle the equipment that you have. You know, um, uh, uh, it may be uh, uh, the redheaded stepchild, if you will, uh, a CV, but uh, you know, it's not really. Um, it's just uh, different bands, different equipment. So if you've ever uh, lived a different life or had uh, different uh, radio equipment, uh, yeah, see what to, see what you can use and and, and reuse and. Um, yeah, there's a there's a whole hobby out there of uh, GMRS, CB, um, uh, FMRS, uh, a lot of stuff, especially in the, uh, in, in the in the Colorado here in the mountains and things like that. So um, very cool stuff. This is Drone K1 DBC Net Control. We have another 15 minutes. Any other comments, questions, check-ins? Uh, please call now. Kilo Foxtrot Zero Foxtrot Papa India. Ron in Lakewood with traffic. KF0, FPI, Ron, got you checked in. Uh, not, sorry if I uh, missed your call earlier, but uh, uh, KF0, FPI, Ron, uh, the net is yours. Go ahead. This is KFC FBI. I'm having some radio woes tonight. I was trying to get a new, a brand new radio um, hooked up to this repeater, and I'm I've checked in six times, and I guess I'm not hitting you. So I'm on all reliable right now. Back at you. All right, FPI, Ron. I thought I had maybe heard you in there very briefly at some point or something. Yeah, sorry to hear that. So 145.49 for receive. 144.89 to transmit. It's a negative 600 kilohertz transmit. And it does require a 100 hertz PL tone. So do make sure you have that 100 hertz PL tone. We're not able to remove that anymore. So receive 144.49, transmit 144.89. Or if you set it by offsets, it's negative 600 kilohertz, and then 100 hertz for the PL tone. Uh, if you uh, want to try again, uh, I'll go right ahead. Yeah, Daron, I've been doing this for two years. I I know that. Um, I'm going to hit you with my my new radio, which is an FTM 200D, and See if it's hitting you. Um, back at you, Jerome. KFC FBI. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Uh, uh, KF0, FPI run, FTM uh, 200D, it sounded like. Uh, so I didn't hear anything in the last uh, like 10 to 15 seconds. If you want to try it once more, I'll, I'll leave it uh, for another uh, 10, 15, uh, 20 seconds here. Go right ahead. All right, this is a K1DBC net control. Nothing heard there. Sorry about that, Ron. I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, it's a base, basic stuff on the repeater information. So yeah, you know that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if anybody else has an FTM FTM 200D and maybe has uh, some some follow up on on what might be going on here. Why uh, why FPI Ron here might not be able to uh, uh, transmit on the repeater. Looks like it's just a, a standard kind of a two meter seventy centimeter. Uh, um, uh, uh, rig here. So uh, if anybody has any other uh, follow-up on that, go right ahead. Well, he might have set the tone, but he might have not have set the squelch properly. Okay, zero issue.
All right, KZOSM, yeah, got you on that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I would imagine if he was uh, keying up, we should hear something at least. So um, if there's... If you want to try again, Ron, on the uh, on your handheld or, or on the FTM, uh, go right ahead. Well, the repeater's coming in fine. And I, w I have this same antenna hooked up to a Kenwood TM281, which I use quite often for this net. And, um, I mean, I haven't had this... this I haven't had the FTM powered up for an hour, so um, I hear I hear the repeater fine. So I don't know. I guess I'll have to just kind of keep playing around. So you're um, keen and you're getting the squelch hail from the one four five repeater, or I mean <laughs> this repeater. I'm getting uh, I'm getting a great signal from one four five four ninety. KFC row FPI out. Well, I think still it's uh, it's uh, like tone squelch or uh, transmitter squelch. I think squelch is your problem. You've got everything programmed incorrectly. Just my thought. K E zero S U M back to. I got a 100, 100 tone there, um, and I'm negative offset, uh, 600K, so I don't know. I think I'll just keep experimenting or try another repeater and see if I'm in there. That's what I like about this hobby. Um, it's kind of a never-ending Expiration. Um, back at the net, KFC or FBI. Now you're uh, two thirds of the way there. You've got your tone and PL, but you're still missing uh, what kind of a squelch you're going to use. What do you see at the top? Is there like a T dash TN? I have my squelch turned all the way down, and um, I'm really not catching that haze that you normally do. Now, what you'd want to do is uh, go ahead and uh, touch the screen, and then down at the bottom there should be a squelch button, or and then touch that and decide what kind of squelch you want to use. You want to use TTN, which is Tone Squelch, KE0 issue. Hope I'm helpful. This is K1DBC Net Control. I think I see what you're uh, saying here, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Drone. Uh, I just memorized these things. Uh, no problem. This is K1 DBC Net Control. I swear someone else had maybe the same issue, though, too, with maybe this radio. But it sounds like uh, the issue, FPI Ron, is even though you set a 100 hertz PL tone, it you still need to set a, a squelch type. Uh, I think tone, one, one of the tone, uh, tone e ENC or tone sequel, I think, to actually enable that 100 hertz PL, I believe. Or for the offset, I can't remember. No, you don't want DNC. You don't want ENC? That's on my Yesu here. Uh, I, when I uh, put my tone on, I put the ENC in. Go and check that out. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking. I don't think that's what you want. Well, you would want to get what you want to 
when you set it up, you want a negative and you want the tone. You want a negative and a T. That's all you want. You don't want a T squelch. You just want a T. It should do it itself. Well, no, uh, it doesn't do it by itself. You have to tell it. Yeah, you have to program it. So let's have it digress quite a bit back. Um, so the problem is you can hear but not talk. And we've decided that's probably due to tone squelch, possibly. <laughs> KU0SUM, back to you, drone. All right, sounds good there, Jonathan. Really appreciate that, and uh, whoever else was chiming in there, really appreciate that. And uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's strange that it's uh, not as straightforward as, as you would think it might be. Uh, FPI Ron, but I think yeah, you're very, very close there. Yeah, you can hear us, but uh, not transmit. So yeah, it has something maybe to do with that uh, transmit uh, tone or squelch or something like that. So uh, yeah, if you want to try it on on this repeater or another repeater, uh, yeah, go ahead and try it out and uh, and let us know. But uh, yeah, I appreciate everyone else's uh, follow up on that. KFU FPI. FPI, go right ahead. Yeah, I'm looking at my my um, F list on my 991 Alpha, and I see the tone that I have on this, and I'm talking on now, is that CTCSS. I do not, I have not found that part in this new radio on uh, FTM 200. So I think I need to find that and that might resolve my problem. So all that experience you're getting at HRO, Jonathan, is paying off for you. Oh, thank you. I still think what you should have set for squelch type is tone squelch, not uh, anything else. Uh, this is Ken Wendy, BC Net Control. Alpha Bravo, here on my Yesu FTDX3000, uh, and I use it for six meters. I have it set up with the uh, repeater uh, with a negative offset, and I have the tone set on the ENC, and then in the rig itself, in the memory itself, I have the the one the 107 point whatever it is and uh, and here on my radio it says it says squelch off so I'm using the the, the tone ENC and th this is the way this rig runs it or is programmed anyway this is kilo echo zero alpha bravo back to net All right, Alpha Bravo, this is a K1DBC Net Control. Uh, appreciate the follow-up on that. It looks like it can be set up maybe in a couple different ways, which may be a, uh, a part of the confusion here, though. But, uh, yeah, I think we're definitely uh, ch uh, toning in on or uh, uh, honing in on the issue here. So, yeah, tone sequel frequency, uh, maybe that will set it for all frequencies, maybe. And then maybe the, the sequel type uh, tone ENC is, is uh, Alpha Bravo maybe mentioned there. If It'll, it'll uh, go back to the channel to look for it. So uh, you're very, very close there. So uh, hopefully uh, uh, FPI run, um, this has uh, been a of help to you and uh, uh, yeah if you have any other follow-up or if anyone else has any other follow-up on that uh, we're in, nearing just the end of the net uh, there's no uh, hard uh, stop to this but any other comments questions on that or anything else uh, please call now FPI FPI Ron go right ahead Sounds good there, FPI Ron. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, uh, yeah, let us know in the future. Yeah, SUM, Jonathan, go right ahead. Uh, please do us a favor and not transmit from your basement. Go upstairs out on your deck where we can hear you better. Uh, it's a little scratchy. Okay, zero SUM, back to net. W, zero, T, X, repeater. FPI. FPI. 
All right, uh, thanks there, Jonathan. FBI, Ron, go right ahead. Is this scratchy, Jonathan? I'm down in my basement on my 991A. That's what I normally do. I bet it has a better antenna and it's a way better radio. Oh, um, I'm going to give you the old uh, uh, year 5x9. Get you zero issue M. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. Yeah, sounded much better on that radio. So, yeah, hopefully I uh, just need to make a, make the right uh, corrections and settings on the new radio and same antenna should be uh, should be golden. So, yeah, appreciate that. So this is K1DBC Net Control. Again, anyone else? Any other uh, comments, questions, check-ins? Uh, um, nearing the end of the net, uh, but we're, we're uh, still uh, some time here. Uh, anyone else? Any other comments, questions, check-ins? Please call now. All right, this is K1 DBC Net Control. Yeah, and as I think Ron was mentioning, um, a hobby of experimentation and half the fun is really just getting things to work. And, you know, as in life, it's uh, the journey is often uh, a, a lot a lot more fun than, than the destination. But, uh, you know, um, you know, learn and, and, and uh, figure things out and, yeah, keep, keep experimenting. So this is K1 DBC Net Control. Um, this is the Denver Radio Club Learning Net. Again, w0tx.org for or uh, w0tx.org for more information on our club. Again, upcoming DRC Saturday event this Saturday. Come check us out uh, in person uh, at uh, Prospect Arena. Uh, more information on our on our website there. Uh, a lot of upcoming events. A lot of upcoming stuff there. Um, we've talked about quite a few things here this evening. I, I didn't. Uh, 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 Copy of it enough down though, but uh, w0tx.org again forward slash check in if you'd like to follow along with the check ins. Um, with that, uh, anyone else? Any other comments, questions, check ins? Anything else for this evening's Learning Net? Please call now. Let's see, quick real ca uh, recap here. Um, brought up some uh, some news that uh, K0LAI had uh, uh, brought, uh, brought up uh, on our HAM learning net, uh, groups.io, about uh, APRS, uh, SMS gate, uh, uh, GTE uh, not working anymore, or uh, 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 temporarily ceasing uh, to work uh, due to spam. We talked about uh, another uh, uh, link that uh, he brought up. Really appreciate that. Amateur radio was helped uh, during Colorado storms. Uh, uh, Arapaho areas and uh, Adams County areas uh, group uh, uh, video on uh, on local KDVR here. So that was pretty cool. Uh, talking about uh, CW uh, learning, CW ops, um, learning uh, Morse code, things like that. Uh, uh, A0SF Steve is uh, uh, sharing his adventure through that. Um, let's see what else here. Um, Talking about uh, asking about how to learn, um, um, uh, uh, studying for your licensing, uh, different tools online, things like that. Um, what else? And then, uh, yeah, a good portion of the the, the latter portion of this net was uh, talking about uh, antennas and, and and radios. So getting back to the to the core of the hobby. So uh, this is K1 DBC Net Control. Um, I'll throw it out. This will be the second to last call. Any other comments, questions, check-ins? Please call now. All right, this is K1DBC Net Control. This will be the final call. Any other uh, last minute comments, questions, check-ins, anything else you'd like to bring up for this evening's Learning App, please call now. KF0 FPI. KF0 FPI, Ron, go right ahead. How was that signal, Jerome? This is on the new radio I've been I've been playing with for the last hour or two. I found a setting, and if it was a rattlesnake, I'd probably be dead. Um, back to you. FPI, Ron, awesome. Yeah, you're sounding great there. There's a little weird noise in the background, but the uh, signal overall is very, very good. So yeah, awesome to hear. You got things working on the uh, the FTM 200 there. So uh, really cool stuff there. Yeah, there looks like there's a lot of settings in there. So uh, yeah, glad to hear that. I appreciate everybody's help. And somebody came in and said the ENC 
Um, that's where it was, and I had the whole thing turned off. So it is what it is. Great hobby to um, have a fun time with and get frustrated with all at the same time. This is KF0 FPI. Back to net. Awesome to hear that, and thanks for letting us know the the change that you made there. The tone ENC had to be uh, turned on. So yeah, I'm sure there's a a lot of ways that can, the radio can be used, and uh, yeah, glad to hear that that's at least uh, worked for now. So awesome, yeah, a lot of experimentation and uh, yeah, uh, frustration here or there, but it's always nice to uh, have things work. So yeah, appreciate everyone's help on that, and uh, yeah, quick turnaround on that. So yeah, FPI Ron's uh, working on the uh, FTM uh, 200R uh, 200 uh, radio now, and. Uh, is, is off so good to uh, good to go so awesome this is k1dvc net control um one last call any last minute comments questions check-ins uh, please call now All right, this is a K1DBC Net Control. Uh, some uh, quick things here, youtube.com forward slash Denver Radio Club. If you've missed this net, if you can't check into it, or if you want to uh, uh, view it off uh, a after hours or whatever it may be, uh, we record this online as well as our meetings and, and other nets as well. So uh, several years worth of, of, uh, of, of content here. So check that out, youtube.com forward slash Denver Radio Club. Uh, you can watch it live if you want. Um, what else here? Um, yeah, a lot of stuff on our website. Uh, really appreciate everyone checking in and uh, participating more here. Um, I closed the script. Give me just a moment here. All right, uh, this is K1DBC Net Control. Again, really appreciate everyone who joined in here. Uh, we had a total of uh, 14 check-ins this evening. Uh, another check-in uh, right at the last minute there, uh, W0AWS. Uh, uh, Albert, really appreciate you checking in there online. Um, Let's see, we appreciate and uh, thank our Elmers, uh, er everyone who can uh, uh, join this net. Uh, again, uh, join us every Wednesday. Um, let's see, join us on the third Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. for our Elmers session prior to the regularly scheduled Denver Radio Club meeting at 7 p.m. They take place online, cw0tx.org for more information. Our last meeting was uh, by Desiree Backus, a, a local uh, um, ARL um, um, a volunteer, uh, and so she gave us a presentation on uh, uh, local ARL stuff and uh, NASA on the air, so uh, check that video out. Um, let's see, uh, all the other Wednesdays uh, at 7.30 p.m., uh, check us out for the uh, the learning net that you're listening into here. So uh, really appreciate everyone being here. Um, again, I'll play a couple more minutes of a, of a podcast uh, uh, of Where's My Jetpack, uh, uh, really cool, um, uh, of the technology that was uh, uh, we were talking about 50 years ago. Where is it now? So uh, Sarah Crudis, uh, uh, Luke Moore. So uh, if you're on YouTube, you can hear that for a couple minutes. But uh, this is Deron K1DBC. It's always a pleasure. Um, again, 7-3, and uh, I am clear. We'll talk to you all next week. No, Deron, I didn't want to check back. Where's my flying car? Yeah, sorry, where's my jetpack podcast? Where's my flying car? Where's my space hotel? This one in particular. So here's just another couple more minutes of that. Uh, everyone uh, have a good evening. All right, thanks everyone. Check this out. Then, as the possibility of humans in space edged ever closer, came another rocket pioneer, Werner von Braun. This advanced base or space station will be headquarters for the final ascent to the moon. Though it would be the Soviets who would launch the first space station into orbit in 1971. The Americans would follow shortly after, with their own version called Skylab, where professional astronauts could live and work in orbit. This is what Skylab looks like inside. Big. Bigger than any manned spacecraft ever put into orbit. 25 times the working and living area inside an Apollo command module three times the size of Russia's Salyut space station. Skylab is not only the biggest, but by far the most complex object ever put into orbit. Later, there was the Mir space station, the pinnacle of Russian engineering. Some of the hazards the crew faced included a near catastrophic fire in 1997, and eventually it burned up in the atmosphere and crashed down to Earth. Not exactly ideal. 
Mir was followed by the International Space Station, the largest human-made object in space, and today home to around six or seven astronauts at a time. It is nice to see crew arrive from this side of the space station. Radio Sierra X-Ray, we've got you loud and clear aboard the International Space Station. Welcome aboard. It's great to talk to you again, Craig. But for years, the space station was the preserve of professional astronauts. And with no way of washing properly and a toilet you needed to strap in to use, it's not quite the five-star hotel you dreamed of. All right, thanks again, everyone. We will talk to you all next week. Have a good evening. early space missions were just a matter of days. It was about mm -hmm. going somewhere to prove something, prove that we could go to space, that a human could actually survive in a spacecraft in space.